the French Grand Prix, formerly known as the Grand Prix d'IACF, Automobile Club de France, is an automobile competition staged as part of the annual Formula One World Championship of the Federation de Internationale de Automobile. It was the first Grand Prix and one of the oldest motor races ever held. Due to unfavorable financial conditions and sites, it was discontinued shortly after its 100th anniversary in 2008 with 86 races have been staged. 2018 saw the races return to the Formula One schedule and it was held at Circuit Paul Richard. Over the years, the French Grand Prix had its share of drama, so in anticipation of this weekend's action at Paul Richard, we thought we'd look back on some of the more memorable incidents from our time competing in France. The French Grand Prix has been held in a number of different cities over the years, and during that time we've witnessed both brilliant performances, like Elaine Prost's victory at Paul Richard in 1989, and in heated rivalries like David Coulthard's unsporting gesture, to Michael Schumacher at the Magna Coors race in 2000. So in this episode today we'll be walking about five storylines that we are actually excited about ahead of the French Grand Prix. In the 1989 French Grand Prix, Mauricio Gugelman's car was involved in a lap one collision that sent it flying into the air. One of the most recent collisions happened in the 2018 event when two French drivers collided head on at the start. Here are some of the themes that have us thrilled in front of the French Grand Prix at Paul Richard, which will conclude the first half of the 2022 season and start with a journey to the south of France. 5. Driver's Silly Season Developments Between the Formula One paddock packing up to depart Austria and getting set up in France, last week in Portimao, IndyCar standout Colton Herta tested a 2021 vehicle for the team. Immediately following that test, they announced the addition of defending IndyCar champion Alex Palau to their larger racing schedule. The release did mention he would also test a 2021 vehicle at some time, but there are still contractual concerns with Palau to resolve and uncertainty around where he would compete. All of this only serves to fuel conjecture about Daniel Ricciardo's future, since he has a binding contract that runs through the end of 2023. Ricardo has publicly said that he has no intention of leaving, but it's no secret that neither he nor the club are happy with how this season has turned out thus far. With multiple world champions Alonso and Sebastian Vettel, two who have yet to clarify their future plans, and seats still technically open at six of the teams on the grid, such conjecture only intensifies scrutiny over the seats and perspective movements. Four. Schumacher hitting his stride. This week's feature seems to be all about momentum, and Mick Schumacher is another driver who possesses a lot of it. The young German has been in excellent form lately, and after waiting for 31 Grand Prix for his first points to materialize, thanks to an 8th place finish at Silverstone that also featured a thrilling battle with Verstappen. He followed it up in Austria in spectacular fashion, a second consecutive Haas double point score which included Schumacher's first top six finish at the Red Bull ring, helped the team climb back up to seventh place in the Constructors' Championship after falling to ninth before the British Grand Prix. And rather than being two instances of good fortune, they seem like merely compensation for the promise Haas has demonstrated thus far this season. Don't forget that Schumacher's first Q2 appearance took place at Paul Richard last year, even if the 2021 Haas rather slow and he crashed in Q1 while running in the top 15, it was still a more competitive performance and there is a good probability that the run will continue for the 2020 Formula 2 champion, who is definitely gaining confidence. French backing for Alpine With McLarens having the edge because of Lando Norris's podium finish in Amola, Alpine's extremely good double points performance in Austria brought the teams even in the race for fourth in the Constructors' title. However, it appears that the French team has the advantage, and they will be aiming to pass McLaren and take fourth place going into their home race. Esteban Ocon's stunning fifth place finish in Austria, which continued his excellent season thus far, was a highlight of the outcome. However, Fernando Alonso's 10th place finish from the back of the grid also contributed significantly. 
and it was Alonzo on a Silverstone track similar to Paul Richard beat Norris to fifth place, ensuring Alpine earned more points than McLaren the previous week. The enthusiastic French crowd will be supporting their team in Le Castellet, and Ocon and Alonso's early season results offer plenty of cause for hope going to Alpine's home race. 2. Mercedes is likely to be strong again We had an incredible amazing race at Silverstone, and I'm sure you don't need me to remind you of that. Mercedes managed to pose a threat to the top two teams, and Lewis Hamilton appeared to be in the driver's seat. The British drivers move on Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez at the penultimate corner as the three battled it out in front of a supportive home crowd will live long in the memory, despite the fact that Hamilton ultimately had to settle for third place. Fortunately, we won't have to wait long to maybe witness something similar, because Paul Richard is a track that resembles Silverstone in some ways, with fast turns and a smooth surface that should favor Mercedes a bit more than Austria did. Mercedes' presence in the mix and probable capacity to deprive them of points makes the race for the championship unpredictable, which will worry to the top two teams. It's possible for Hamilton or George Russell to deprive Red Bull or Ferrari of points, which would help the other team and either bring the standings closer together or widen gaps. 1. Ferrari Building Some Momentum some believe the race for both championships was already over before the season had been completed due to Red Bull's run of six straight victories. The threat the Ferrari had presented at the majority of those six races, though, was ignored in that viewpoint. It's true that throughout that time, Ferrari hadn't been able to capitalize on their opportunities, but over the last two race weekends, Carlos Sainz's victory at Silverstone and Charles Leclerc's subsequent victory in Austria served as a reminder to Red Bull that Scuderia hadn't disappeared. The two teams have been evenly matched for the majority of the season so far and there's no reason to believe that will change in France, where Ferrari had tire wear issues a year ago, but learned important lessons that helped them advance. Leclerc has moved up to second place in the driver's standings, and over the last two races, has reduced the distance between himself and Max Verstappen by 11 points to 38. Even while you'd still prefer to be in the lead in the championship, if Leclerc can recover some more ground this weekend, some pressure may start to mount on the reigning champion. The Formula One calendar reaches its halfway point with the French Grand Prix, and there will only be one more race before the summer break. The Drivers' Championship is currently being led by Max Verstappen, who has a commanding 30-point advantage over Charles Leclerc of Ferrari. Verstappen, the current world champion, hasn't always had everything his way. The Dutchman finished ninth at Silverstone due to problems with his Red Bull, which allowed the pursuing group to make a return. Lewis Hamilton and George Russell finished third and fourth, respectively, in Austria last time out as Mercedes continued their upward trajectory. Both have yet to win a race in 2022, but you get the impression that might soon change. This sums up today's video. Let us know about your views about the French Grand Prix in the comment section. Thanks for watching.